He wants to work. That's his goal. And they've taken that away from him. Apparently, my hair may not be appropriate for work. Federal appeals court just ruled that employers can ban hairstyles like dreadlocks in the workplace. The 20 year old was told at his training session that he had to cut his dreadlocks off or go. Racial discrimination has to be based on characteristics that can't be changed. In 2016, a group of researchers and advocates at Perception Institute partnered with Shea Moisture to create the first study which examines attitudes related to black women's hair. This study is called Hair IAT and allows anyone to take an online survey which asks questions determining their opinions about black hair. This study comes right after a huge superior court decision that allows employers to reject job candidates due to their hairstyle. The Hair IAT study so far has found that the general public holds a harsh bias toward bushy, thick, and kinky curly black hairstyles. Not to mention the growing number of stories where black employees are passed over for promotions and even sometimes fired because of their hairstyle choice. This gets us asking, what is the problem? To find out, we asked some of the members of the Bay Area community to give us some insight into the topic of black hair in the workplace. I sat down with hair salon owner and stylist Jessica Jennings at Crowning Glory Salon, who specializes in black hair trends. I'm Jessica, and I'm the owner of Crowning Glory Hair Studios. So tell me a little bit about the work that you do here. I do African-American hair, but um, I specialize in extensions and color. So tell me a little bit about the beauty trends that you're seeing in the black community as far as hair care. Um, extensions are big right now, long, flowing, curly, colored especially like bright colors is in especially summers coming up so like purples and blues i basically do sew-in extensions there's a lot of different types but i only do sew-ins i feel like that's the safest route to go um you can either do like a full head or you can do tracks which is like pieces of hair extensions in where most of your hair is already out. A lot of people choose it, one, because it's easier to take care of, um, two, maybe people are having trouble with their own hair. Me, personally, I'm lazy, <laughs> so I like to put in a full sew-in, so I don't have to do anything on the regular where it's easier to take care of the extensions rather than my own hair. About 80% of my clients are natural. I, I don't have a lot of people coming in for relaxers or texturizers or anything like that. They're fine with it. Their hair grows just as fine. Um, it gets moisture just as great so it's, it's really a personal preference whether you want to go natural or have a relaxer or chemicals in your hair and if you can tell me with your clients that are coming in for weaves what industry do they tend to be in I have a wide range of right. clients I, I mean I have strippers up to judges that come right. in and get their hair done my professional women uh, most of them like their hair in a nice, neat style. They want to make sure that their extensions look exactly the same so it doesn't look like they have extensions in because it's, you know, frowned upon, I guess, in a professional setting. Also, they would like it shorter as well. Um, they don't like it too long, uh, too showy. It just depends on what they do on a daily basis. The cost can range. Um, obviously, if you're going more professional, it's going to be a lot more. I mean, there's so much that we have to do in order to maintain our hair. Um, shampoo, conditioner, um, a treatment, a scalp protector, uh, you know, edge control. I mean, you gotta have nice edges, so, and it costs a lot. Like, you can spend easily $200 just on products. Just on products. One question I wanted to ask is, do you think that there is an outside pressure, so outside of our community, do you think that there's a pressure toward black women to present their hair in a certain way? To society. I feel like there can be a, a pressure because um, I know we have like Team Natural that's like, oh, if you're not going natural, you're not black. <laughs> or if you're wearing a weave, you know, you want to appeal to white people. You know what I mean? So it's like there's a pressure coming in on both sides and it's just always hard to pick what side that you want to be on. And honestly, it's whatever you feel comfortable with. Whatever makes you feel beautiful, that's what you should do. Now tech is a booming industry in the Bay Area, and most of these tech companies such as Google and Lyft advertise their liberal views. Earlier this year, Lyft CEOs issued a statement condemning a temporary ban on travelers from certain Muslim nations. We talked with Ezra Valles, an employee at PlayStation and self-proclaimed naturalista, to ask her a few questions about wearing natural hair in her workplace. So why do you choose to style your hair this way? I mean. 
Tell me about your personal style. Well, I cut my hair recently, and mainly I did it um, for professional reasons. While I love my hair and I love styling it, it was just too much. There'd be days where I can't do my normal routine for my hair. I just don't have time. I need to like simplify my life somehow, so I cut it first, and then I was like, I can't do this. I cut it even more. When I go to work, everyone's like, oh, you know, why'd you cut your hair? And I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm just tired of people always linking my hair to kind of being too big and too wild and I just need something simple and a little bit easier to style. So was it your preference to have big wild hair before and you decided that you didn't like that look anymore or was it a result of you know outside influence that you decided that you didn't want to maintain that look? It's about a mixture of both but mainly just what I deal with on campus kind of pushed me more into just cutting it all off. People, the comments, just always looking at my hair, wanting to touch my hair or... What sort of comments were you getting, for example? Or, and were some of these comments bothering you or... So what sort of comments were you getting? Thanks. People will say things like, how do you deal with your hair being so big all the time? It's manageable, but you know, you can't always control your frizz. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, okay. Or people will say things like, um, Big hair is just not professional in the workplace. Definitely in the workplace, I find myself dealing with like my superiors who look at me a little differently because my hair is always crazy. Or maybe if I didn't style it a certain way that day, they'll kind of give me that look like they really want to say something, but they can't. Why don't you tell me what your routine is like now that you've cut your hair? <laughs> it's so simple. I literally just throw water in my hair, throw some conditioner in it, and a little bit of light gel, so it's still the same product, just less. I spend a lot of time in traffic. It's like about an hour and a half commute there and back. So the quickest that I can get out the door, the better. But I definitely have been told, you know, in previous roles, mm -hmm. that I should think about how I wear my hair every day, or should think about how I dress. So I would tell a hiring manager not to think too much into someone's hair specifically a black person's hair, if they were to be hired. Um, I really don't think it defines anybody. Now, I would take that with a grain of salt though, just because, you know, you never know. Some people might have maybe too much color in their hair, or maybe the style's just a little too edgy, but in my workplace, we don't really think about that too much. Just if you want to have a more professional title or you want to be taken seriously, just think of how you're gonna work that. Maybe don't tell them, hey, your hair looks unprofessional, but at the same time, don't really tell them that, uh, you know, just go cut your hair or don't do that or, you know, shave it all off. Color it a different way. Just let them be themselves and just base it off their performance, not so much their appearance. I reached out to a senior tech recruiter and former Salesforce employee in the Bay Area to hear her side of the story when it comes to employees rejecting certain hairstyles when it comes to hiring candidates. It might be tougher in some environments. If a, uh, a candidate had uh, natural hair, if you're in more of a corporate setting or if you're in more of a formal setting, like maybe financial or banking, where it's more, where you're dealing more with the public and you are being seen by individuals every day, it might be tougher for you to have natural hair because they're not used to that look. They're used to straight hair, they're used to permed hair, relaxed hair, and um, and that's what they're used to. That's how they're used to seeing us. And so having this trend come about where we're being, you know, more natural these days and feeling like we want to be more ethnic and really promote who we are as a people it is new. And well, it's not new, but it's new to them now, to this particular generation, and so they're not used to seeing it. And it, it, it can be tougher. Do I think that I would be judged if I wore my hair natural? I'm not sure how my coworkers um, specifically, or people that I work with specifically would view me um, in wearing natural hair. Would I ever consider it? Sure. Um, if you know it was a style that I felt was, um, made me feel pretty, um, and made me feel confident about who I am, then absolutely I would. I think that I choose this style in my work environment because 
it, it's comfortable for me. You know, there are times when I have to speak in front of um, an audience that does not look like me. Uh, and so it, I think if I do something, because of my nature, if I do something that is so radical, like wearing natural hair or something along those lines in my position, I think it, it would be uncomfortable for me. So I think it would be, have to be a process for me um, to, to really do that, uh, but sure. We heard the women's side, but wanted to know how perceptions of black hair affect some of the men in this community. To find out, we sent correspondent Alton Ray to speak with Dre, barber, hairstylist, and owner of Hella Massive. As a barber, as a professional in the, in the hair industry, what do, you, what do you think are some of the more popular trends in the black community today? You know, you got the curly top now. People are just growing hair now. Man. Like, people are just embracing it. You know, you, you, you come from a time where everybody had the clean cut waves, mm -hmm. and now everybody's, you know, just being black. So how, how long have you been a barber? Shoot, almost a decade now. It's about like nine years. A decade? Almost 10. I was, uh, I, was, I don't know, I was really lost between that, that, that point of graduation and college, and I was trying different colleges out. I had moved to Georgia for a couple of months and came back. I was in uh, Vallejo, and my mom told me, hey, there's this barber school. So I ended up going there. I went to Hinton Barber College. Yeah, and it just went from there. I just I figured out I was good at it, you know, <laughs> or I was just better than a lot of people I was around. So I see that you, you have, you're rocking the, the, the dreads, the, the long hair look. You know what, when I was a kid, I had long hair. My stepdad didn't really like it. So I would try and grow it out like all the time. And he was just making me chocolate. Two or three years ago, I said, man, let's just go for it. You know, got him twisted. I was just growing with my hair as it grew. Have you ever been reprimanded for your hair? With the stuff that I pursue, my comfort zone, which is like art and stuff. And, and you know, just culture, you know, and you can't really discriminate off of people trying to sell culture. Have you ever had a, a client come in and say that they actually need to change their look because of what was going on at work? Yeah, this actually actually um, happens every every other week, actually. Like every people, other week? Man, people come in the shop and be like, yo, I gotta cut my hair off, and they're scared that they can't get the job because as soon as they get in, the interviewer is gonna, you know, discriminate on them and say, like, no, nah, he's a hoodlum. They're criminal, they're not good people, they're rebellious. How, do, how does that make you feel? I mean, I know it's not your hair, but like... And it is, it's not my hair, but sometimes I feel like it is. I'm, I'm the one who, who's been styling you up this whole time. I've been, True. I've been over here coaching, I've been coaching you how to grow it, I've been telling you what to put in it, I've been telling you how to take care of it. And then when you come in and you're like, yo, I, somebody's making me cut it off, and it's not you, it's not your decision, I don't like that. I feel like, yeah, we're the only ones that's targeted for the way that our body grows naturally. Like, what kind of what kind of world are we living in? Yeah. You know what I mean? Dreadlocks and beards are still considered unprofessional in many career fields. In 2012, Chastity Jones sued Catastrophe Management Solutions after they denied her employment for refusing to lose her dreads. The judge ruled that banning dreadlocks in the workplace is not discrimination. Many people, especially those in the black community, see dreadlocks as an affirmation of their cultural background and identity. Alton Ray sat down with Bay Area native Lamar, who rocks both dreads and a beard to work. Let's go back a little bit to the first time you had your set of dreads. What were you going through that, that led you to, to cutting your dreads? It's been a journey. When I cut the first locks, it was because of my older brother. He cut his hair. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we all had long hair at first and, and I, I felt like I, I, I was a follower at that time. Mm -hmm. And then once I became more, uh, more in tune with who I was, I was able to find myself in the process. However, I was in an emotional state in my younger 20s. So it's been over a decade, you mm -hmm. know, since I cut. And so just with my hair now, I wear it like this because it kind of gives me a sense of uh, individual achievement. Say you woke up tomorrow, had a change of heart. I want to get into uh, tech or corporate. And they say, yeah, we got a great position for you, uh -huh. but them got to go. Mm. Now, is that mandatory they gotta go? So to hire me, they gotta go. They gotta go. Let me, let me, let me really, <laughs> let me really put this into perspective for you, man. If the interviewer is telling me that in order for him to hire me for the job, in order to, to fill the position that you have to do to Z, right? Yeah. You didn't already accepted me. 
And if you can't accept the full me, I'm gonna make this, this company a certain amount of income and gross. And if they don't fully accept what I'm bringing, then I'm gonna go to the competitor. So you're not gonna cut it? No. We've heard from members of the Bay Area community who widely consider their hair to be a topic worthy of discussion, both at work and at home. There seems to be a consensus that hard work and professionalism should trump anyone's hairstyle choice. Even in the making of this documentary, I struggled to select a hairstyle that was non-threatening to my audience and potential employers. If I decided to wear my hair natural, would my hair choice make it harder for certain audiences to listen to the story? In a world where social justice and equal rights concern concerns are on the rise, and furthermore in a country where individual identity is demanded, shouldn't we be allowed to express our unique and diverse identity in the workplace?